Matthews Gatos here. In this video, we're going to cover section 3.4. But before we do that, I want to review section 3.1. So looking at these four examples here, I want to identify which ones are the polynomials. And for the ones that are the polynomials, I want to state the degree, the leading coefficient of the n behavior, and the y-intercept. So let's start with a. If I look at a, I can see I have whole number coefficients sorry, whole number exponents and real number coefficients. So this is in fact a polynomial. So because I know this is a polynomial, I can state the degree, which is the highest exponent of x, the leading coefficient, so that's the number in front of x exponent 5, the end behavior. Since I have degree 5, which is an odd degree, my arms go in opposite directions. And since the leading coefficient is negative, I know my end behavior is going to be like this arm is going to be up, this arm is going to be down, something like that. I don't know what's happening in the middle, but my end behavior is going to be going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. My y-intercept is my lonely number, my number all by itself, which is a 4. So my y-intercept is 0 and 4. Okay, let's look at the next one. 1 over x. Well, that can be rewritten as x to the negative 1. And since it's a negative 1, it is not a polynomial because the exponent is not a whole number. Let's look at c. I have whole number exponents and real number coefficients, so I look like I'm good. My degree is my highest exponent, which would be a 4, leading coefficient, the number in front, negative 4. So since it's a negative leading coefficient, but an even exponent, I know that my graph is opening down. So my arms are going to go in the same direction. They're both going to be pointing down since it's a negative leading coefficient. It's going to point down. Since it's an even coefficient, they go in the same direction. So this is going to be from quadrant number 3 to quadrant number four. And my y-intercept is my lonely number all by itself, which is a three. So that would be zero and three. If I look in the next example, I have an exponent of a half. I'm not allowed a fraction exponent for a polynomial. So this is not a polynomial. In section 3.4 for this video, we're going to look at equations and graphs of polynomial functions. So how do we go from an equation and sketch a graph and how do we describe the relationship between the zeros and the roots of a polynomial and its graph? So let's look at just taking the factor x minus 4. So x minus 4 has a root of x plus x equal to 4. So a root being the x-intercept. So you can see the x-intercept of all of these graphs is 4. By taking that factor of x minus 4 and raising it to different exponents, I'm going to get a different behavior at that x-intercept of 4. So for example, when I have an exponent of 1, what's happening at the x-intercept? I'm just passing through. When I take my factor and raise it to an exponent of 2, what's happening at my x-intercept? I'm touching and turning around. If I have that same factor x minus 4, but this time I cube it, I have a curve change. It's kind of like a slide through 4. So it looks like that one factor behaves in three different ways depending on the exponent I raise it to. So let's take that factor and combine it with another factor. So I'm going to take that x minus 4 to the exponent of 1, so it stays the same, squared and cubed. And I'm going to add it to a new factor of x plus 2, and that's just going to be to the exponent of 1. So look at this new x-intercept here. Of x plus 2, I have an x-intercept of negative 2. So I'm introducing this one here. So you can see at x minus 4, I have an x-intercept of 4, and I'm still passing through. But I have this x minus, or x plus 2 at negative 2 also passing through. My x-intercept at 4, I'm still doing a touch and turn around. And at negative 2, I'm still just passing through. My x-intercept of 4 when I have it cubed was a curve change. I still have that curve change. And at negative 2, I'm passing through. So it looks like all those same rules are applying, even if I add on another factor. 
these exponents that all of the factors are raised to are called a multiplicity of an x-intercept. So that's the number of times a zero of a polynomial function occurs. And depending on the multiplicity, I have a different behavior at each of those x-intercepts. So when I have a multiplicity of 1, I'm just passing through at that x-intercept. So I can see that all of these x-intercepts, since I'm passing through, they all have a multiplicity of 1. When I have a multiplicity of 2, that's what I'm going to touch and turn around. So all of these x-intercepts have a multiplicity of 2 because I'm touching and turning around for every single one of them. And when I have a multiplicity of 3, that's the slide or the curve change. So I know that all of these x-intercepts have a multiplicity of 3 because there is a curve change. So the multiplicities, whether it's even or odd, behave the same way. So here, when I have an even multiplicity, so these are all even multiplicities, 2, 4, 6, etc., they all behave the same way. They don't cross the x-axis, they touch and turn around, and they hug the y-axis the more, they hug the y-axis more as the multiplicity increases. So you can see at 2, 4, 6, at 6, I'm getting even closer to the y-axis than I was at just x squared. When I have odd multiplicities, these all behave the same way. They all cross the x-axis. That's a big key. So they cross the x-axis, and there is a curve change. This curve change is a fancy name called a point of inflection. And as I increase in mu multiplicity, I get closer to the y-axis. So you can see I'm closer to the y-axis here at x exponent 7 than I was at x cubed. So let's look at how do we find the equation if we're given the graph. So we're going to use all of these rules of multiplicity to help us. So identify the x-intercepts and look at the behavior of each of those x-intercepts at the x-axis. And that will help you with your multiplicities. Once you've got all your factors with their multiplicities, you always solve for your a value to see if there's a vertical stretch. Pick another point that is not the x-intercept. So other than the x-intercept, super important. Look for some other point to substitute in for x and y, and then, of course, you can solve for a. So let's look at this one here. I want to write the equation um, of this graph here with the lowest possible degree. So I can see here I have an x-intercept of negative 3, which means I have a factor of x plus 3. An x-intercept of negative 1 is a factor of x plus 1. An x-intercept of 2 is a factor of x minus 2. So I can look at a times all of that. Now let's look at the multiplicity. At negative 3, I'm just passing through. So this has a multiplicity of 1. At negative 1, also passing through, multiplicity of 1. And at 2, you can see I'm doing a touch and turn around, which is a multiplicity of 2. So I can add on a squared to this one here. Okay, and I want to solve for a. So I pick another point, such as the y-intercept, anything but the x-intercept, and I'll substitute in y for 6 and a, or sorry, x for 0 to solve for a. Okay, and then I just simplify it. So 3 times 1 times 4. 3 times 1 times 4 is 12a divide both sides by 12, and I get a in lowest terms is a half. 6 over 12 in lowest terms is a half. So my equation is y equals to a half, x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 2 all squared would be my equation. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's try this one here. So again, writing the lowest degree possible. So looking at this, I have x minus, or um, x intercept at negative 4 means I have a factor at positive 4. And when x is 2, I have a factor of x minus 2. So looking at negative 4, I touch and turn around, which makes this factor squared. And at negative 2, I have a curve change. So that will be to the exponent of 3. So I'm going to plug this in for x and y. So y equals a times 1 plus 4 squared times 1 minus 2 cubed. So 5 equals a times 5 squared times negative 1 cubed. 
that would be 25, 5 squared is 25 times a, and then negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So it's going to be negative 25a altogether. So 5 squared times negative 1 cubed is negative 25. And I'll divide both sides by negative 25, and I get that a in lowest terms, 5 over 25 in lowest terms, is negative 1 fifth. So putting it all together, my equation is negative 1 fifth x plus 4 squared times x minus 2 cubed. That would be your final equation. Okay, let's look at how to graph without technology. So one thing that you can look for is the leading coefficient, and that will help you with the end behavior. Leading coefficient and the degree will help with your end behavior. So positive leading coefficient on degree, positive leading coefficient even degree. You can see what your end behavior is. Negative leading coefficient and odd degree with negative coefficient and even degree, you can also see what your end behavior is there. Look for your intercepts, x and y intercepts, that will help you. The behavior at the x-axis, we're going to do this using sign analysis. I'll show you what that means in a minute. Is the graph above or below the x-axis in between all of the x-intercepts? That's going to help you with the behavior um, above and below. Behavior at the x-axis, we're going to look at the multiplicities. Am I passing through, am I touching and turning around, or am I having a curve change? So let's try an equation like this. I have x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 4 all squared. So my x-intercepts are just the opposite of all my factors. So 1, negative 1, and negative 4. The multiplicity is what do I raise each one of these to? So x minus 1 is to the 1, x minus x plus 1 is to the 1, and x plus 4 is squared. So the multiplicities are in red. If I want to figure out what the degree is, the degree is the sum of the multiplicities. So add up all of your multiplicities and you're going to get the degree. So it's the sum of the multiplicities. Okay, leading coefficient. So we're looking at the number in front of x. So there's a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here. So if I multiply all those together, I get a leading coefficient of just 1, which is positive. So the end behavior, I have a positive leading coefficient with a degree of 4. Well, degree of 4 is even, so I know my arms are pointing in the same direction. Since my leading coefficient is positive, my arms are pointing up. So since they're pointing up, I'm, my end behavior is going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. Okay, so I've got a lot of information there. I need to know a little bit more. I need to know the behavior at the x or in between the x-intercepts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at x plus 4, and I'm going to look at my root, which is negative 4. Now, if you pick a number below negative 4, like negative 5, negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So to the left of negative 4, my factor will be negative. If I pick any number greater than 4, negative 4, I could pick negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, etc., all of my factors will be positive. So we're going to use this little shortcut here. To the left of the root, the factor is negative. To the right of the root, the factor is positive. So left is negative, right is positive. We're going to use that to fill in the rest of the table. So x plus 4, it's going to be the same because I have two of the factors because it was x plus 4 squared. So x minus 1, that is 0 right here at an x-intercept of 1. So to the left of that, it will be negative. To the right of that, it would be positive. x plus 1, that is 0 right here at negative 1. So to the left, it's negative. To the right, it's positive. And then I just have to multiply these together to figure out what my function is. So negative times negative times negative times negative. Four negatives make a positive. So that means to the left of negative 4, my function is above the x-axis. In between negative 4 and negative 1, you can see I have two negatives, so that makes a positive. That makes sense because at negative 4, I had a touch and turn around. Okay, let's look at in between negative 1 and positive 1. I have one negative, so that means the function will be below the x-axis between negative 1 and positive 1. And then to the right of 1, 
all of these are positive, so the function will be positive or above the x-axis. So now let's try and put all of that together, okay? So at x plus 4, I have a touch and turn around, and that's going to tell me my end behavior there, okay? At x plus 1, or x-intercept is negative 1, I am passing through, and I know that in between these I'm positive, but below this I'm negative. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to pass through my y-intercept. At x minus 1, x-intercept of positive 1, that's a positive, or sorry, a multiplicity of 1, which means I'm passing through. So I kind of have my, what my graph sort of looks like, but I don't know what's happening in this section or this section. In this section here, to, to connect these two pieces of the graph, I must have a turnaround point somewhere here. And then similarly, to connect down here to back up here, I have to have a minimum turning point. So I'm looking up here for a maximum turning point and down here for a minimum turning point. So I do have to go to my graphing calculator just to help me out with those points there. So it looks like I'm going to come up here to turn around, come down here, and then connect to that graph there. So it's not very pretty, but you get the idea. I've got my intercepts labeled. I have my y-intercept of negative 16 labeled, and then I will label my minimum turning point, 0 0.2 and negative 16.9, and my maximum turning point at negative 2.2 and 12.4. Let's look at how to graph our functions with transformations. So back to chapter one again. Let's do this with mapping notation. So let's say I have y equals 2x cubed, and you can see I have some nice points that are on that graph. And I want to graph the transformed function, y equals negative a half, and it's negative a half x plus 2 cubed minus 4. So what I want to do is isolate y, which it already is, and then factor out my b value here. So this will be x minus 4 and that will be cubed minus 4. I always like to check if I put this back in, I get negative 1 half, and negative 1 half times negative 4 is positive 2, so I know I've done that correctly. So looking at my mapping notation, on the outside is what I'm doing to my y. So I'm multiplying it by negative 1 half and going down 4. And then for my x, I'm multiplying it by negative because it's a reflection, but horizontal lies, so it's 2, not a half. And then x, instead of minus 4, we think that that is going to the left. It's actually going to the right because horizontal lies. So then it'll be plus 4. So let's run that through the mapping notation. When x is negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And positive 4 plus 4 is 8. And then your y value, negative 1 half of negative 8 is positive 4. Minus 4 is 0. When x is negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6, and then negative 1 half of negative 1 is 1 half, and 1 half minus 4 is negative 3.5. Okay, the 0, so that's just going to become 4, because negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4, and then the y becomes 0, and you're left with negative 4. For 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 4 is positive 2. And then negative 1 half of 1 is negative 1 half, minus 4 is negative 4.5. And then lastly, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Negative 1 half times 8 is negative 4, minus 4 is negative 8. So I'm going to use my mapping notation with all of these points to come up with the graph. So you can see I have my points there that we just figured out on the side, and I've plotted them. So all I have to do is kind of connect my dots like that. And that would be a little sketch of what the graph looks like. So just plotting my points, connecting the dots in a similar way with a little point of inflection or curve change. Now I can always put this on my graphing calculator and just check, and you can see that's a reasonable graph that I came up with. So I know I've done that correctly. So to summarize this lesson, multiplicity of the roots determine the behavior at the x-axis. So when we have multiplicity of 1, we're just passing on through. Multiplicity of 2 is a touch and turn around. And multiplicity of 3 is a curve change.
The leading coefficient and the degree determine the end behavior of the graph. So pay attention to that. And to find the equation of a function, use all of that information to come up with the factors and the behavior of the factors or the roots with the multiplicities. And always solve for A, but don't use the x-intercepts. Use something else. So in terms of functions here, these two functions, we're looking at this guy and saying, what's his problem? Well, don't mind him. He's just odd, as in an odd function. So I want you guys to now go and do your practice questions, number one to five. Of course, detailed solutions for those are on D2L. And then you can go on to your textbook questions after that. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.